before taking the research participant into the room, ensure that they have properly combed out their hair. This will make the cap out process easier for you. Also ensure that the research participant does not have any electronic devices on them, such as smartwatches, phones, earbuds, or more, as this can interfere with the EEG. Once the participant sits down in the chair, bring the electro cap into the observation room and clip the carabiner onto the box. Once this is done, both research assistants should put the cap on the research participant together. One research assistant should adjust the cap onto the research participant, making sure the front two electrodes line up with the research participant's eyes. The other research assistant should loop the rope under the wires of the cap to remove the weight. Ensure that the cap fits the participant's head. If it does not fit, remove the cap and place it by the sink to be washed. Get a larger or smaller cap depending on the issue. If the chair is too low or too high, adjust the setting of the chair in order to make it comfortable for both the research participant and the research assistants. At this point, take the subject performance sheet, write down the subject ID, then record the cap start time at the top of the sheet. As you go along, make sure to check off the boxes found on the subject performance sheet to ensure that a step is not missed. Keeping the participants engaged is an important part of the process and is vital in making them feel comfortable and interested in the research being conducted. These are some of the potential topics that you can use to talk to participants. First, use the blunt tip syringe to suck up the gel from the container. Then, fill up the ground electrode on the cap, labeled GND. Remember to hold the electrode in place with two fingers before squirting the gel. Use the butter churning method, as demonstrated, with the blunt end of cotton swab to work down the electrode. When you're done, fill up the electrode again with the gel. In case too much gel comes out of the syringe, wipe the excess off with the tissue. In order to plug the cap into the amplifier, you must first make sure that the cap connector feet are pulled forward. Plug the cap into the connector until the feet snap into place. Be careful with this step and do not try to force the connector together as it could break. After one research assistant plugs the cap into the amplifier, the other research assistant should start the impedance check on the recording computer. To do this, walk out of the observation room over to OMI, the EEG recording computer. Press the create icon on the recording computer desktop. Once create is open, click start in acquisition. The amplifier window should open with the settings above. If you do not see the grill amplifier listed, then click the amplifier dropdown to search for network amps. Then click start amplifier. In order to display the impedance check in the testing room, click the ohm symbol at the top to show impedance. Return to the testing room when done and turn on the monitor that is hanging on the wall to display the impedance readings. This will be used during cap prep to ensure all the electrodes have been worked down sufficiently to below 5 kilo ohms. Use the alcohol pads to wipe down all the sites on the skin that the ocular electrodes will be placed on. On the left side of their face, wipe down the skin on the mastoid where the left reference electrode will be placed. Then, wipe down the skin horizontal and vertical to the left eye as demonstrated. You may need to ask the participant to lower their mask for a brief moment to wipe the area below the eye. 
Also, advise the participant to close their eyes in order to prevent the vapor from the alcohol wipes from irritating their eyes. On the right side, wipe down the skin on the mastoid where the right reference electrode will be placed, as well as the skin horizontal to the right eye. Once the sites on the face are clean, the research assistant on the left side can begin to attach and prepare the left reference. Tear about 2 inches of tape and place it on the top of the electrode so that it is in the center. Make sure to leave a small amount of tape hanging above the electrode so that it can be securely taped to the research participant's face. Next, use the blunt end of the cotton swab to poke a hole in the tape where it aligns with the hole in the electrode. Always make sure to poke a hole in the tape before attaching it to the research participant's face. To attach the electrode, make sure to place the electrode underneath the participant's mask to secure the wire. Using the syringe, fill the left reference electrode with gel, and then work it down for a minute or so using the same butter churning method as previously demonstrated. This should reduce the impedance on the FP1 electrode. When working down electrodes, remember to use one hand to hold down the electrode. To further lower the impedance on FP1 to below 5 kilo ohms, fill the FP1 electrode with gel and work it down. If it comes down quickly and easily, it is a good indicator that the impedance at the left reference junction is low. Finally, fill the electrode back up with gel. If FP1 does not go down easily to below 5 kilo ohms, go back and work down the left reference electrode again. Remember that the more time you spend working down this electrode, the less time you'll have to spend on every other one. Don't forget to fill up the electrode again once you're done. At the same time as the research assistant is working the left reference, the research assistant working the right reference should begin to attach and fill the right reference. First, take the electrode out of the case. Then, plug it into the socket that can be found on one of the pillars of the stand that the amplifier is on. Before attaching it, pass the wire of the electrode between the loop of the cable. Prepare the electrode the same way that was done on the left side, by tearing 2 inches of tape and poking a hole. To attach the right reference, bring the electrode under the mask and secure it on the mastoid. After securing M2, fill up the electrode. Work down the M2 electrode using the butter churning motion. While doing this, keep an eye on the monitor to see the impedance of M2 drop. Sometimes, if the impedance does not drop, topping the electrode out with gel after working down for a bit will lower the impedance. Once both the left and right reference sites have been attached, filled, and worked down, the left HEOG electrode can be attached. Prepare the electrode, labeled HEOL, the same way as before, and bring it under the mask strap to attach it. The electrode should be horizontally aligned with the participant's pupil. Fill up this electrode with gel. Simultaneously, the other research assistant will attach the right HEOG electrode, which is labeled HEOR. Same as before, we will bring it under the mask and attach it horizontal to the people. Fill this electrode with gel as well.
work down the HEOG electrodes by using the same butter churning motion. This should drop the HEOG impedance on the monitor to below 5 kilo ohms. As usual, fill up the electrodes after you're done. After both reference electrodes and the left and right HEOG have been worked down, the research assistant on the right side can attach the chin strap. To attach the chin strap, gently pull the strap under the research participant's chin, making sure their right ear is inside the hole, and place the velcro of the strap on the left side under the research participant's left ear. Make sure all wires connected to the electrodes are securely in place underneath the strap. The electrode labeled VEOU should be placed above the eye aligned with the pupil. Similarly, the electrode labeled VEOL should be placed below the eye also aligned with the pupil. If an ocular electrode does not seem secure, use an additional piece of tape to secure it in place. Now, fill up the VEOG electrodes with gel and work them down using the butter churning motion until their impedance on the monitor is stable under 5 kilo ohms. After a few electrodes, the cotton swabs can become swollen with the gel and no longer fit comfortably into the electrode. When this happens, toss the cotton swab and take a new one. Start filling in the scalp electrodes. Use one hand to hold down the electrode to prevent salt bridges. Always keep a tissue on hand to wipe off any excess gel. This process is done simultaneously to increase efficiency. Do not fill or work the electrode OZ between O1 and O2, as this is not used in the recording process and will not appear on the monitor. If needed, use bobby pins to secure the electrode wires onto the cap. Make sure you don't block any electrodes in the process. Using the usual butter churning method, work down the scalp electrodes. You should see the impedance drop on the monitor. Ensure all the impedances are stable below 5 kilo ohms before stopping. Don't forget to fill up each electrode with gel after you're done working them down. Check with the research participant if they are comfortable during the process. If needed, ease up on the pressure while working down the electrodes. To turn off impedance and return to EEG, click the OM button again. Then, move the mouse away from other buttons to be safe. Do not click the red circle under any circumstances. Come back into the room and explain the EEG to the research participant. Next, turn off the monitor so they are not distracted by their brain activity during the study. Finally, record cap finish time on the subject performance sheet and also note down if there were any issues during cap prep.